All right, let's continue from where we left off in the last dissecting of this particular video. The earth will become like it was in the Garden of Eden once again. Isaiah 60, 19. The sun shall no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. That thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thine morning shall be ended. There will no longer be darkness anywhere in the world. The glory of the Lord shall light the entire earth, just as the glory of God lights heaven. That's right. So let's... Uh compare that uh, first of all if we go back the sun shall be no more thy light by day neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light in thy God thy glory so if we go I think it's 21 or 22 can't remember so if we go to 21 verse 23 and the city had no need of the sun neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God did lighten it and the lamb is the light thereof and uh, chapter 22 and there shall be no night there and they need no candle neither light of the sun for the Lord God giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever Alright, so that's completely consistent. These are parallel, no question about it. No more darkness. It'll never get dark ever again. Zechariah 14, 6, 7. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, that an evening Excuse time me. it shall did he say Zechariah? It's in that day that Zechariah 14, 6, 7. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, that in evening time it shall be light. Days and nights as we know them will not be normal. The light will fade, but it will never get totally dark. Isaiah 65, 20. There shall no more thence be thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. In this kingdom to come, time itself will begin to fade away. The lifespan of mankind will increase to the point that a hundred year old person will be considered an infant. I still got 30 years to go. <laughs> so I'm really an infant, huh? Yeah. So let's go back to 65. There shall be no more thence an infinite days, nor an old man that has not filled his days, for the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. <laughs> In contrast to the expanded life, death will cut off a sinner without hesitation. Man will have the potential of living for the full thousand years. Okay, so that's not what this is talking about in Isaiah 65. All right, so remember, once we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord Jesus, we are then changed in a twinkling of an eye. All right, let's confirm that. Okay. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We're going to be changed from our corruptible bodies into our incorruptible bodies, and there will be no more sin no more death 
So this is not a limited period of time. This is everlasting life. There are three aspects of this passage that the reader should realize. Children will be born during this time. No. Okay, so in the time after the resurrection, after we are lifted up, we are changed forever, and there is no more death, no more sin, no more sorrow, no more pain. Now you think uh, there has to be sorrow and pain during childbirth. There is no more childbirth. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but, as, but are as the angels of God in heaven. There's no more sex. I'm sorry, but it's going to be much better than watching HBO or whatever. This, this idea that we're going to have sex in the life to come, it, it's not supported by the Bible in any way at all. Which means that there will be flesh and blood people on earth. Secondly, man will still be able to sin against the Lord. And many will. No. Thirdly, no, there's, there will... That's not... Okay. First of all... Um, no. That's not in the Bible at all. After the Lord Jesus comes, we are changed forever. Death would definitely be still death. No. It would be no more death. And because there's no more death, there can be no more sin. Jesus is going to make all things new. Alright. No more death. Revelation 21 verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write. For these words are true and faithful. This is what happens when the Lord Jesus comes in the air and we are changed. We, In the twinkling of the eye, we are changed from corruptible to incorruptible. All right, this is on the great day of the Lord when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and judgment is made and the saved are changed. The unsaved are destroyed. The next passage gives us many promised blessings. We're going to break it down. It's Ezekiel 34, 25 through 30. I'm going to start with verse 25. And I will make them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land, and they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. This verse gives mankind a promised blessing of physical security. Man will live free from fear of being harmed. Verse 26. And I will make them and the places around about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in its season. There shall be showers of blessings. This verse gives, gives us a promise of good weather. Destructive storms will no longer plague man. Verse 27, And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord, when I have broken the bands of their yoke, and delivered out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. This verse gives the promise of abundant fruitage. You're never going to lack for food again. And that all will know.
Yeah, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So, um, perhaps, uh, you know, I want to be fair, but perhaps there's a disconnect to what this is saying in, Isaac, in Ezekiel 34. No, the Lord at this point in time. Verse 28. And they shall no more be praised to the heathen, Neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. This verse gives promise of political peace. No other nation, heathen or otherwise, shall make anyone afraid, because the Lord will cause everyone to dwell safely. Verse 29. Oh, political peace. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, Okay, well, there, in the resurrection, in the life to come, there are no heathen. The wicked are destroyed forever. Neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none, and none shall make them afraid. 29. And I will raise up them a plan of renown, and they shall no more be consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen. This verse gives the promise of a new plant that will grow abundantly throughout the entire earth that will cause famine to never again plague the earth. Yeah, the famine of not hearing the word of God, not having the bread of life, uh, you know, it could mean uh, several things. Um, but that's it's true there will not there will not be any famine no question about it but um, this idea um, that there are going to be unsaved people in the resurrection uh, after the judgment and after the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ it's, it's not supported by the Bible at all and so uh, I see a lot of uh, the, this is very typical. People will not connect the dots and not understand what's written in the Old Testament and ignore what's written very plainly in the New Testament. So okay, so it's been ten minutes. So I'm, I'm going to do in five minute segments here because I want to keep these um, short. I don't want to be long winded, but. Um, everything that he's saying is based on the idea that there's a thousand year period coming after the Lord Jesus Christ which this is this has been taught at um, a great deal and my I estimate there's probably about 99 <clears throat> excuse me about 99 percent of all the pastors in the world teach this idea of this millennial reign which is not in the Bible at all and what people are doing is they're listening to what other people teach and they're not reading and believing the Word of God alright so that's my contention and I want to go over this a little bit to help somebody to understand very the very simple truth of um, the end of the world and the world to come and it's not going to be a zombie land zombie eclipse like so many people are teaching and that's exactly what these guys are teaching is that there's coming a thousand year period of zombieville all right they're and i would encourage you to pin it maybe you're one of them pin pin yourself down or pin them down on this ask them do you believe there are unsaved people that are still going to be alive after the Lord Jesus comes? All right. In other words, they have to say when Jesus comes, there is no judgment. All right. And then, like I pointed out the other day, Sherbear asked a great question. 
what is the point of the thousand year reign of Christ that is that this idea that is coming after the Lord Jesus comes what's the point the only point that I can think of is to have this thousand year period of zombie you know zombie eclipse where there's one group of people pointing their finger at another people at another group of people and um, lording over them all right much like what the evil rulers of this world are doing to the poorer folk in the world today right that's, I mean, that's happening now so essentially what you're saying is the rules are going to be reversed in this thousand year zombie period and uh, you know the idea of people still having sex man that's not going to happen it's not supported by the Bible and this idea that they're going to be unsaved people that's not supported and it specifically says there will be no more death now to wrap this part two up I'm gonna read these comments here by Alex M E S he says the thousand years are the period in which Satan is held back after the first judgment at the coming of Jesus between the first and second coming okay so I look I get it this is what people are teaching but it's not in the Bible all right and I want to ask you just to put some thought into this. All right, so what you're saying is that Jesus is going to come down to earth, the, which is be your first coming, and then he's going to come down to earth again, and that would be a second coming. The problem is that's not supported by the Bible where's he going where do you, <clears throat> you know what I mean well, where do you, where do he go where well, Jesus just gets up and leaves well, why why would he just get up and leave and then just to come back again there's no and that's not true man it doesn't ring true it's not supported by anything in the Bible He's just gonna up and leave and then come back immediately, or what? Or what? How's that work? That's not. That's not in the Bible. So in Revelation 20, all right, let's let's do it this way. You'll notice in in the very first chapter. If I can find it here, where's this at? Oh, the very first verse. The very first verse. <clears throat> Excuse me. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So what we're getting is a lot of visions uh, to in order to show us what must shortly come to pass right so in the beginning of Revelation 20 we see and I saw an angel come down from heaven this is signifying a new vision another vision I right, have in the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years now the reason why this is happening is told to us very plainly why he's bound for a thousand years so that at the end of the thousand years when the thousand years are expired sh Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and show and shall go out to deceive the nations and gather them together and then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them that's what 
Revelation 20 is talking about when it says Satan is bound for a thousand years and then loosed. This thousand year period starts with the baby Jesus and it ends with the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, it, and it's a limited period of time because we now have the Spirit of God in us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those of us that are born again, born of the Spirit of God, those of us that are baptized in His name, those of us that are His children, those of us that are the elect, those of us that are chosen of God and are the holy priesthood, all right, we are reigning with Christ right now and this is this is amazing remarkable really that people are not seeing that phrase with Christ they lived and reigned with Christ All right, it's not Jesus reigning a thousand years it's us reigning with Jesus and when we are born of God we have God in us and Jesus is God Almighty All right, and we are priests of God just like Peter says we are a holy priesthood All right, this is nothing new and shall reign with him a thousand years now at the end of the thousand years is when the enemies gathered our, at our feet and we are lifted up in the air we're changed we you know first the dead rise in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain are lifted up with them enemies at our feet we're up in the air fire comes down and destroys them forever just like what we read in um, you know Genesis 3 and all throughout the Bible until he has made his enemies oops his footstool all right so um, Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right. This is uh, also in Psalm. I, I like to go to 110 here. Then the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. This is all talking about the end of the world. And as we. Uh, notice this gentleman points out two uh, ver verses in the Old Testament that talk about the sun being darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken all right also Jesus says the same thing and he says those things will happen when he comes in the clouds of heaven and that's when they will gather together the angels will gather together his elect those of us that are saved that's when Satan is loosed and he gathers together the unsaved at our feet okay and this all pertains to the end of the world okay when this happens it's the end of the world so we go to Revelation 20 verse 11 this is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ there's not two returns of the Lord Jesus Christ because to suggest that would be to say he came down he came from in the clouds of heaven we were lifted up the wicked were destroyed we are set back down on earth and yeah, I don't want to give this guy too much too much of a hard time, but he's suggesting that um, people will die after this, and that's completely against logic, completely against what the Bible says. After we are changed in the twinkling of an eye, and there's a new heaven and a new earth. After you know, after the wicked are destroyed, let's not forget about that. It's not just the wicked, but it's all wickedness forever and ever death sorrow pain suffering all that's gone 
forever and ever and there's a new heaven and a new earth where there there's no more death there's no more sin there's no more dying and there's no more having babies all right this whole thing with having babies this is also temporary and you know I'm really getting into it now so you go back to Genesis 3 when Adam and Eve they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and uh, they're found out and God says because thou hast done this alright thou shalt okay let me get to it unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children alright so on one hand okay I want to be nice about this on one hand he says um, it'll be just like the Garden of Eden but then on the other hand he says it's going to be like it's not going to be like the Garden of Eden right in the Garden of Eden there was no child bearing it was only until after they eat they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and they were kicked out of the garden that now God put this on us to have children to be fruitful and to multiply okay so all of this makes sense it's all logical there's a reason for everything that's we're reading and um, when you start throwing in this idea of a thousand year zombie world it, it it totally confuses everything in the Bible it doesn't fit anything in the Bible at all um, it, it doesn't it's illogical and, and again uh, just I would push you or push anybody to answer this question what's the purpose of having saved people transformed into their incorruptible bodies because that's what's going to happen when the Lord Jesus comes now look at some point you guys you keep reading the Bible you keep believing in the Bible you're going to come to this conclusion and you're you can't get around it when the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised in corruptible and we shall be changed this is exactly what happens in Matthew 24 all right at the end of the world there's no way to get around it all right at the end of the world when the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right we are changed in the twinkling of an eye all right there's no way to get around it and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet All right. in a moment in the twinkling of night the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and will be changed this is at the end of the world alright so when the end of the world comes man all this stuff with the childbearing and death and all that sorts of sin and, and all that sort of all the wickedness of the world all all that sort of stuff is going to go away all right it's all going to go away and so i got one more comment here correct that's when the dead in christ rise up and those who are not in christ die Okay, let me read the thousand years are a period in which Satan is held back after the first judgment all right so that's okay you have to okay so you're gonna go say that there are two coming of the Lord Jesus's and there are two judgments okay that's not supported by the Bible at all all you have to do is connect the dots here realize that there's the Lord is coming once once and forever in the clouds of heaven all right and when he comes that's the end of the world all right so also is that the judgment okay that is judgment day 
when the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he comes to judge, to change everything, to judge the saved from the unsaved. Now, he gives, I don't know how many examples in uh, parables. I don't know if I can give an accurate list. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. The kingdom of heaven is like a he, I mean, he over and over gives all these parables explaining what the kingdom of heaven is like. And none of these support the idea of two, two coming of the Lord Jesus and two judgments. Man, it's so obvious. Just connect the dots. One coming of the Lord Jesus. One judgment. And it's final. Alright? And correct. That's when uh, the dead in Christ rise up and those who are not in Christ die. I've heard it put that Satan is bound because there is no one to deceive since they're all dead. Then after the thousand years they are brought back and try to destroy Jerusalem and that's when they are destroyed for good. I can't make any sense out of that at all. It tells us exactly why uh, Satan is bound and it, it gives us specifically his purpose and that is to gather the unsaved and they are gathered at our feet okay and this is just a, a short period of time just you know we're gonna be up in the air with the Lord Jesus when he comes in the clouds we're, we are lifted up first the dead in Christ and then those of us that are alive and remain are lift are caught up with them All right so and then the, the enemy is gathered at our, at our feet that's the devil or Satan gathering together the unsaved at our feet and I've I haven't studied this in the longest but it's something I studied in the SDA church no longer SDA well that's good but uh, for the same reasons you're no longer SDA I would also consider that what they were teaching in the SDA Perhaps it was wrong, right? But this is not just an SDA thing. This is we're seeing this being taught by almost everybody. And again, there's no mention of Jesus reigning a thousand years, not in Revelation 20, nowhere. It is those of us that are believers, those of us that are saved, those of us that are born of God, those of us that are the elect, the chosen ones the holy priesthood of God. We are the priests and kings of God. And we live and reign with Christ in us right now. We are saved, sealed, sanctified forever. And we have we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. Right, this is different than what it was before, you know, baby Jesus. Before uh, Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, right? It was, it was, the world was not like that before. Now it is. And that's why we're in this thousand year period from the time of Jesus, from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return, from the time of his death, burial, and resurrection until the time of his return. This is that thousand year period. All right, it's for a limited time only, okay? Right, so I want to get more into this, and I want people to share their thoughts. I want to be as nice and respectful as possible, but I want to clear up some of these confusions, misunderstandings that people are having. For example, the idea of two comings. All right, where does he go? Why did why does he come back and then go away again? It doesn't. There's no sense to that at all. And so I want you to further, if you, you know, either take some time to think about it or let's talk about it. Let's, uh, let's shine some light on this idea because nobody's shining the light on uh, the, these things in the 
what it, when it comes to the people, you know, the pastors that are teaching the stuff. They just lay it all out because this is what somebody else taught, and they're ignoring the plain written word of God. All right, so let's shine some light on it, and then, um, God willing, I'll try to get into what this gentleman is saying here. He's a great speaker, and he's laying out what they're teaching very well. The problem is what they teach is not true. The Bible is true. All right. And we can trust the Bible because the Bible is from God.